Hello and welcome to another Rygate Maths video. My name's Simon and in this video we're going to be looking at the variable acceleration section of the kinematics and vectors chapter in the second year mechanics for the Edexcel syllabus. This extends the ideas from the first year about variable acceleration and includes how to do the variable acceleration techniques if we have our parameters, so displacement, velocity, acceleration, given as vectors as opposed to just equations. So I, the first kind of thing to remember is variable acceleration tells us immediately we do not use SUVAT. Okay. So if a question ever talks about having variable acceleration, you do not use your SUVAT equations. Okay? If you do, it is incorrect. The thing to remember is if we're given displacement, how do we find velocity? Well, we differentiate with respect to time. If we need to find acceleration, we differentiate velocity, which is the same as differentiating displacement twice. We get A. Likewise, we can go the other way. So velocity is the integral of acceleration with respect to t, and displacement is the integral of velocity with respect to t. Using these properties, uh, you can basically work out all of these different ideas, these constants, or these not constants, but um, these formulae from given formulae. And so we're going to go through a few examples to have a look at those. So here's our first example. A particle is moving in a straight line with acceleration a equals cos of 2 pi t. Given that the initial velocity is 1 over 2 pi meters per second, find an expression for velocity at time t. So first things first, we know that we're trying to find velocity. And we know velocity is the integral of acceleration. So that's our starting point, and you must write that down. So we have the integral of cos of 2 pi t, which is 1 over 2 pi sine 2 pi t plus c. We know that when t is 0, v is 1 over 2 pi, because we're told that, which means that v, sorry, 1 over 2 pi is equal to 1 over 2 pi sine 0, which is 0, plus c. c is 1 over 2 pi, so therefore v is 1 over 2 pi sine 2 pi t plus 1 over 2 pi meters per second. So in its essence this is just an integration question. It's nothing beyond that. It's just it's given in a very wordy way. So if you can do ch reverse chain rule or, or chain rule or product rule, integration by parts if necessary, this is just an integration or differentiation question. In this case it's just integration. But that's all these questions are. So we're going to add a part B and a part C to this. Um, so here's our part B, hence find the maximum speed. So there are lots of ways we can do this question, but there's if we're clever about it and think, we can save ourselves a lot of work. What a lot of people would think, you go, oh, maximum means find the, the derivative, set it equal to zero. Great. Well, we already have the derivative. We know A is cos of 2 pi t. So if we set that equal to zero, we can find t, stick it in, this equation to find the maximum v. However, let's think about this a little bit more cleverly. We have trig in our equation. So we know the maximum that sine of 2 pi t can be. We know that can be 1. So therefore, the maximum v is going to be 1 over 2 pi 
plus 1 over 2 pi. It's 1 over pi meters per second. So this is the maximum speed. The reason it's speed, not velocity, is we might have minuses in there. So if you've got minuses all over the place, you might want to think about, okay, well, maximum speed might be the lowest the velocity could be. It just might just be very big and negative. So that's something to pay attention to for this question. So this is our last part to this example. Find the distance travelled in the first three seconds. Well, we know distance and displacement are linked together, so let's think about distance. Well, distance is the area under a velocity time graph. How do we find area? Well, we integrate between two limits. In the first three seconds means our limits are going to be 0 and 3, and we're going to integrate v in that area. So we're going to be integrating 1 over 2 pi sine 2 pi plus 1 over 2 pi. So integrating this, we're going to get minus 1 over 4 pi squared cos 2 pi plus t, sorry, 2 pi t, plus t over 2 pi between 0 and 3. This is going to give us some very unpleasant numbers. We've got one over, minus 1 over 4 pi, cos of 6 pi, plus 3 over 2 pi, minus, minus 1 over 4 pi squared, cos of 0, plus 0. Sticking this all in our calculator, making sure we're in radians mode, We should be careful, so what I'm going to do when typing in my calculator, I'm just going to deal with each trig bit. So we can see that cos of 6 pi, well that comes out as 1, which is quite nice. So here we have minus 1 over 4 pi squared. This has no t's in it, or no trig in it, so we can just leave it as b. Cos of 0 is also 1, so we've got minus minus. 4 pi squared. Well, look, it cancels out. Oops. And we're just left with 3 over 3 over 2 pi. So it travels 0 0.477 meters to three significant figures. Again, much like in the previous video, certain things can come up with cardinal directions, and the next example we're going to look at deals with that. The next example we're going to look at, we're not going to be calculating a lot too many things, and actually we're going to be differentiating using vectors. So something to bear in mind for that. So here's our next example. Here we have i and j, our unit vectors east and north, respectively. I haven't written that down, but that is what we're doing. A particle p is moving on a plane. At time t seconds, the position vector of p, which is r, relative to o is given by r is 5e to the minus 3t i plus 2j. Find the time at which the particle is directly northeast of o. So this is what I was talking about in the previous video, where we have something northeast. If something is northeast, that means the i and j components are the same. Okay, because it is at which the particle is, we're talking about of the displacement. If it's the time at which the particle is moving northeast, then we'd be talking about the velocity. Once you recognise that, this is just a normal logs question. You get t is minus a third ln 0.4, which if we just stick in our calculator. 
minus a third, then 0.4, we get 0 0.305 seconds. So not a particularly difficult question in the long run, but just short term looks quite confusing. Part B is find the speed of the particle at this time. So we know that velocity is the derivative of displacement. Okay. Now displacement is a vector. So when we differentiate a vector, all we do is we differentiate each part normally. So here, differentiating this, we get minus 15 e to the minus 3t i. The 2 differentiates to 0, so we have 0j. So this is the expression for velocity at time t. We know the time is minus a third ln 0.4. Now, plugging that in, we have the velocity is minus 15 e to the minus 3 times minus a third ln 0.4. Minus 3 times minus a third conveniently cancels. We get ln of 0.4. e to the ln of 0.4. times 0.4, then we just do 15 times 0.4. So we get minus 6 meters per second. Therefore, the speed is 6 meters per second. So differentiation, we're using vectors, is very similar to normal differentiation. We've just got to do it multiple times. So the last part of this question is explaining why the particle is always moving directly west. So because we're talking about the particle moving, we're interested in the velocity, which we found out was minus 15 e to the minus 3 t i. So first off, hopefully you can understand very quickly why it's moving either east or west. There's no j component. So j component equals zero. So that's an important statement. We now need to justify why it's moving west, why this is always negative. So since e to the minus 3t has to be greater than zero, standard rule of exponentials, regardless of what the power is. Since this is true, minus 15 e to the minus 3t must be less than zero, because it's times e by a minus. Therefore, particle, therefore v, or magnitude of v, has to be less than zero, so therefore particle is always moving west, because the i component is always negative. I don't like this that I've written down. I think we don't need it. So that's kind of that's looking at differentiation with vectors. The last example we're going to look at, we're going to be integrating with vectors. So this is our final example. A particle p is moving in a plane. At time t seconds, its velocity is given by v equals 3ti plus a half t squared j, where t is greater than or equal to zero. When t is zero, the position vector relative to the origin is 2i minus 3j. Find the position vector at time t. So we know that the position vector must be the integral of v. So we are integrating 3ti plus a half t squared j. The difficult thing with integration is where does our constant of integration go? Much like the, diff the previous example, we're just going to integrate each part separately. And all we're going to do is stick a constant on the end. We just need to pay attention to the fact that that constant is a vector. So integrating, we get 3 over 2 t squared i plus 1 over 6 t cubed j plus c, where c is a vector. Now, it, 
you may be able to very quickly spot what t what c is going to be. You cannot just put it in. Okay, c is going to be this. However, if we start having non-polynomial type equations here, that might not be the case. Also, if we're not given the initial position vector, we're going to need to do some maths. So, we know that when t is 0, r is 2i minus 3j. So, therefore, 2i minus 3j is equal to 3 over 2 times 0 squared i plus a sixth 0 cubed j plus c. So, c is 2i minus 3j, which then in turn tells us that r is 3 over 2 t squared plus 2 i plus a sixth t cubed minus 3 j meters. And that's it. As I said, be very wary with just assuming that the plus c is this. It will very much depend on what information you're given to the start or potentially what this equation looks like. If we start having trig here or maybe exponentials, it might not work out quite so nicely. But in this case, it did. So that's the whole of kinematics with vectors. The previous video, we looked at um, SUVAT with vectors, constant acceleration. In this case, we looked at not constant acceleration. All of these you can apply to a multitude of questions, whether it's projectile things for the previous video or you know, really in-depth modeling questions. Regardless, though, this is kind of the last video for the mechanics. Thank you for watching.